Okay, it's 4.45 in the morning here in Alaska, and we are going fishing. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Four three in the morning, five in the morning, and we're going fishing. All right, almost ready to leave. Boat's warming up. Any luck, one of these things will get it. Get us a fish. can barely tell what he's doing, uh, and I'm sitting right in front of him. A lot of stuff going on. Captain's getting prepped for the sun. <laughs> Today. It's getting the treatment, huh? Oh, yeah. You have to. Got your coffee, you got your sunblock. Oh, man. We're good to go. Now all we need is a fish to bite. <laughs> That's a nice fish, huh? That's a king salmon. That's a king salmon. All the spots on his tail and black, black gum line. So why do you like fishing for salmon? Ah, oh, it's like the, it's the hunt. You got practice and patience. It makes for good food. And it's a challenge because these fish are Pretty particular in what they're going to eat sometimes. It's got to be consistent on making a good presentation for them to enjoy snacking on. And they taste so good. They taste so good, by golly. And they're really good for you, too, aren't they? Yeah. Really good. Yes, that's what we like to hear on the culinary edge. Right on. Beautiful fish. Salmon. Got some salmon after a day and a half of fishing. Nice. We're gonna unload our catch and send them to market. Right on. I hope you guys get one. <laughs> I hope we do too. <laughs> So your job is done now that the fish are here? Yeah, I've transferred my fish to the buyer and yeah. so they'll take care of them and box them up and get them shipped off to catch a can and from there they go wherever the restaurant buyers are. Cool. 
the community spot, which is the store. It's where they process the salmon. People can do their laundry here. Um, get beer, which is very important. Um, and other stuff. Uh, so check it out. So you can do your laundry in here. And you can take a shower if you want. Not everybody has showers. You'll notice that everybody, or almost everybody, has a pair of these boots here. Not exactly the same. Oh, oh, yours are a little more stylish, yeah, I noticed that. Because every party that you go to, yeah. everybody's got their extra tufts all lined up right next to the front door. Yeah. And if you're too drunk when you go home, then you put on the wrong extra tufts. So. Oh, and that's what you did? Yeah, I identified. Uh, yeah, I walked home and I had somebody else's extra tufts for like two or three days. that they get really just um, drifts up here into the bay or around and they pull it together and they use it for firewood. And since there's no garbage pickup here in poor protection, <laughs> a lot of the garbage that you need to deal with you have to burn, right? Yes, we burn and we sort and we recycle and we sink. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> There's no uh, ongoing electricity here, no refrigerators, and so really what we do is we just put uh, our stuff on ice in boxes like this. Every time I count my blessings, I count you first. Well, Michael uh, has a friend coming over who's a brewer, and we're actually going to brew up a batch of beer. He brought uh, some of the ingredients to brew up a batch of beer from where he's from and uh, from his brewery, I guess. We're gonna cook up, those, cook up those clams that we had the other day and eat some salmon. So you've been brewing beer lately, huh? Oh, a little bit once in a while. And uh, it just so happens today we're gonna brew up a batch of amber ale. Nice. Where are you guys from? Saugatuck, Sa Michigan. Oh, right on, cool. Yeah, I'm head brewer at Saugatuck, Michigan. So you're a brewer then, yeah. huh? <laughs> oh, I like it, you got your shirt that says yeah. you're the head brewer. Here's a batch of IPA that Michael brewed. We're gonna drink while we brew other beer. In for the whole brewing session, huh? Oh, well, yeah. You have to have something that soaks up all the beer that you're drinking while you're brewing. So I made hot. Yeah. Which is Jewish egg bread. Oh, interesting. Let and me it's, see. It's braided. Oh. Put some sesame seeds on it. And we can just pull off a hunk and eat. I know that you can promise me your whole heart if you're honest, dear, but 51 years old be hard, just play hard, eat hard. Every time I count my blessings, I count All right, taking the grain bag out. Color of the water sure changed. Yeah, it did. It's got a new aroma as well. Mm, it smells good. Yeah, going into our, our liquid syrup. There you go. You got the flame off, yeah? No oh, flame on. We're trying to get up to boil. Oh, really? Okay. That's the end of it. That's not some sort of hamster food. It's actually hops. Hops. Pouring in the dry malt. Yeah, getting ready to slice them open. Sweet. Yeah, take all that out. Yeah. People like to cut part of the stomach out. Half. Just kind of wash off the batch and put it in a in the half shell. I haven't tried my hand at cleaning the plant. Mmm, clam. I did my clam. <laughs> I, only, I only caught one clam, so that's fine. So I, I cleaned the one I caught. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Panko. So you got panko? Is that lemon just pepper. panko? Panko, lemon pepper. 
garlic powder. That's what we're going with tonight. Okay. Yeah, we got the first pan full of kind of just stuffing it with panko. Just a little panko just to make a little spicy crust on there. Face down. Face down. The shell helps contain the heat. Mm. All right, here's the finished clam. How's that? It's good? <laughs> right on. Oh, clams we harvested on the half shell. On the grill with olive oil and some panko. Oh my god. That's fantastic. Amazing. <laughs> Here we go. Garlic on the uh, salmon, yeah? Yeah, I squeezed a little bit of lemon juice on there. And then I'll just smear a little garlic on some of it. And I'll just spread these out. Did you say it was alder? Yeah, just some alder wood. It smells nice. And what does that do? Create like a smoky flavor? Yep. The idea is to get them hot enough to generate some smoke but hopefully not hot enough to generate flames because we don't want to scorch her. Right. There we go. He was a big bull, as bulls go, with great big horns and a big bull nose and he lived in a ranch in Colorado. He was long and lean and black and lean so we called him a caddy like a limousine. Sometimes you push, sometimes you push. 